The orchestra become rock stars on the 4th of July. It's easy to forget how grateful we need to be, how fortunate we are to have been born in this country or to have been accepted by this country. It's one of those things that once you experience it, you can't forget it. They come not only from all over the United States, but all over the world. Boston is very unique this way. The pride that we have in our sports teams is the pride we have in our July 4th concert. It's amazing, it's luscious, it's wonderful. It's massive. It's a community thing on a very, very large scale. Being able to communicate that in the most positive way to the largest number of people is kind of the goal of the Boston Pops Fireworks Spectacular. The Hat Shell is a fairly small, quaint little venue. There's no way we could do a proper concert, let alone a national television show, the way it is. So we build a big stage extension, and that takes a couple of weeks. We have to bring in lighting. We have to bring in audio equipment. And uh, the number of people involved, my goodness, it's got to be a couple of hundred. Now, all this stuff that happens before the orchestra even shows up, it's, it's, uh, it's remarkable what happens here. It's a miracle. He was a violin player for the Boston Symphony Orchestra, somewhere off in the ensemble. But he was an ambitious man with an idea that had never been tried before. Why not, he said, bring orchestral music to people of all classes, out of the symphony halls and into the open air? There'd been outdoor concerts in Boston before, brass bands with a lot of um pa pa but a real symphony orchestra? And for free, it was unheard of. I got on the tee tonight to get over here this afternoon, and I sat down, this woman said to me, I'm from Texas, but I'm taking the family. We're going to see the Pops because it's America's orchestra, and it is. What Fiedler did and what Fiedler wanted to do was make classical music popular and popular music great. And he succeeded in doing that because, you know, the Pops at one time was the most recorded orchestra in, in our history. Fiedler made thousands of recordings. Those discs were heard all over the United States with the brand name of Boston Pops. The tradition of the 4th of July being so American, you know, it was a natural brand, America's orchestra. The third is probably, um, in some ways, the most exciting day because we, um, we haven't met with all or most of the guest artists yet. So this is when we, uh, we put everything together. Hopefully there are not going to be any uh, little snafus, and if they are, you know, we fix them and um, we have a run, an entire run through tonight, uh, exactly like we're going to do it tomorrow for the fourth. And um, it's, it's a great opportunity to do that in front of a crowd. It's exciting, there's a little ap apprehension because uh, we've been working on this for months. And uh, me, for example, I'm working on uh, engaging the guest artists, um, negotiating with them what songs they're going to sing. And then there's also, you know, when you have television, uh, the, the timing has to be just right. So uh, I've had to work with one of the artists uh, on shortening their songs a little bit and, you know, figuring out how can you sh shorten someone's song and, and still keep the essence of the song. They cut stuff? Yes, I, they did cut eight bars out. Okay. We started with kind of transforming the show itself to something a little bit more uh, quintessential pop. The artists that we've hired this year are artists who we would perform with at Symphony Hall or at Tanglewood with the Pops, and they know how to have an orchestra behind them and shine that way, and it makes our orchestra shine as well. There's three elements to the 4th of July. There's the Pops production element, it's the orchestra, it's all of the stage management that comes from Symphony Hall, the audio team that comes from Symphony Hall, and then there's the event side, and these are our operations people who bring water, meals, sound, video, 
um, basically take care, make the Esplanade a venue. And then there's the TV side, um, which is probably about 100 people, top to bottom, that really take this event and put it live on the air. Melissa Etheridge, not only is she a great performer and a wonderful songwriter, but she's one of the nicest people that I've ever met. We, put, we worked with her about three years ago, and it was such a wonderful experience. Everybody got along. It was like a love fest, and uh, I expect it to be the same way today and tomorrow. director, um, one thing that I usually do before I even start is I listen to the music for a couple weeks. And when I get to a show and I have a score reader, it's great because they're kind of prepping the cameras and me of what's happening so that all I have to do is look and listen. The huge team effort. My job is to coordinate all of the guest artist audio needs with the orchestra's audio needs, come up with sort of a master plan for microphones and monitors and things of that nature, and I mix the music for the TV broadcast. The idea of it is to give you sort of the very best seat in the house. So hopefully when you're watching from home and listening from home, you're getting the impact of the music plus a sense of what it's like to be in the crowd. Right now we're, uh, we're standing on one of the three barges out in the middle of the Charles River. You can see we're anchored and we've got spuds that are keeping the barges in place. And on these barges were, were all of the fireworks are loaded for the, for the performance on the night of the 4th of July. So on this barge, this is our right stage barge. Uh, we, we're always looking at stage right, stage left, and center stage. And all of the shells, all of the fireworks are loaded in these fiberglass spun, uh, very rigid mortar tubes. Each one of the shells have it, has its own wire that will then extend back to a control board that then gets extended back through a data cable back to a, another distribution uh, section and then it ends up going back to our show control which is inside of a container which is where the computers are and the pyrotechnicians will be for safety. And you can see there's about, uh, about a thousand shells on, on each left and right stage and then the center stage position has all of the larger shells some of the shells that we'll be firing are 10 inches in diameter. They weigh about 18 pounds, and they'll rise to about 1,000 feet in the air. When they burst, they burst about two and a half to three football fields in diameter. So you can imagine the, the force and the power, the coordination to produce something of this scale. Uh, people don't really appreciate the amount of time. We start working on this uh, in November, uh, October, November. Uh, then it's the selection of the music uh, this year with the Boston Pops pretty much taking, taking full uh, control and production on the, uh, on the entire event. We work with them in, back in December, putting the music score together. And then it's the time to sit down and uh, after that score is, is created, is to design the program. Is that two hours for every minute of what's going to happen in the sky, what's going to happen on the barge, what's going to be launched from, from the bridge. And then after that, I hand that design over to a to our team that does all the programming of all the computers and then all the AutoCAD drawings of the layout and the installation and then loading the trucks and then transporting the explosives here and getting the crew here and just things like uh, organizing hotel rooms and organizing transportation routes and moving explosives through the city and escorts and all of that. There's a lot, a lot of uh, logistics that goes in behind the, behind the scenes. But I tell you, when it all comes together and you push the proverbial play button and you see that first shell go off the amount of relief that you feel, because all of that has been built up to that moment, it, there's nothing like it. And then at the end, naturally, when the audience reacts, that gets you to get up early the next morning and look for the next one. That's right, we are live on the Esplanade on the Charles River for the Boston Pops Fireworks Spectacular. I'm Ann Mostu here with our Bloomberg Boston Bureau Chief, Tom Maroney. Our guest is Melissa Etheridge. Melissa, how does it, tell us how it feels to be in Boston. Oh, oh, it feels so great. I gotta tell you, there's one thing singing and performing for people. There's another thing bringing about three or four people in and, and you're all kinda, you're like on a basketball team. But when you get 60 people behind you, it, it's kind of like a, it's like surfing a very, very, very large wave yeah. that if you don't stay on top of it, it will absolutely, so there's a, there's a little, even now, I mean, I've been doing this for 40 years now, even now, 
I get a little nervous because if I mess up, it'll run me over. The most wonderful thing about the, the size and diversity of this crowd is that this concert means different things to almost all of the five, six hundred thousand people out there, let alone the millions of people watching along on TV. I gotta tell you, this is an amazing experience. Not only just the opportunity to play with the level and quality of musicians that is the Boston Pops, but everything that's involved here, the people of Boston, the, the police force, the state police, the army, the, art, the fire, I'm so honored to just be a, a small part of this and, and to celebrate the you know, birth of our nation with half a million people in Boston. I want to say, let yourself be inspired. Look around, look around at how many people are here and then look around at how different they all are and what a beautiful city this is and what a beautiful neighborhood and community it is of people celebrating our nation's birthday and how patriotism looks. especially on the 4th of July, uh, singing some great, great music, the new Alan Menken song, and uh, just celebrating this country.
This is the house we live in, symbol of liberty, built with the dreams of freedom spanning. Performing with the Pops is, uh, it's massive. I've never performed with an orchestra before, so it's a bucket list item for me. Boss, still up here! I said, nah, nah, honey, I'm good. I got another, but I probably should not. I got somebody at home, and if I stay, I might not. Oh, nah, honey, I'm good. I got another, but I probably should not. I got a bitch you would do to another. I will stay, nah, nah. doesn't hesitate, he exhibits no restraint. He takes and he takes and he takes and he keeps winning anyway. Changes the game, plays and he raises the stakes. And if there's a reason he seems to thrive and so few survive, then God damn it, I'm willing to wait for it. I'm willing to wait for it. Life doesn't discriminate between the sinners and the saints. It takes and it takes and it takes and we keep living. Still, you know, feeling it off of my body. It's amazing. It's nothing like that. It's the biggest crowd I think we've ever played. It was a, it was a great opportunity, a great gig for us. We're so happy we were invited. Please welcome singer, songwriter, musician, activist, Melissa Everett. How can you turn, baby? Didn't die in the fire. Lover, I burn. Let me
a chance to celebrate, put on a party, uh, celebrate America's birthday, you know, blow some lovely fireworks up, that sort of thing. But it's also a chance to express gratitude. It, it, it is, despite flaws, despite things we all have to collectively work on, it is a truly great place.
To learn more about the Boston Symphony Orchestra, please visit www.bso.org.